Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> uh, this is the hull of the uh, of the uh, Queen Elizabeth battleship build we're doing in conjunction with uh, Jack Innerfell's um, Naval History Channel. And the reason I've got this here now is I want to talk about this. Um, this is the base that comes with the kit for this to go on and it's not really great it's basically just a piece of molded plastic that the ship just sits on and it's it's not great um i thought i might try something um a little bit more scenic shall we say so what i'm going to try and do and i've never done this before so this may work or it may be a complete disaster is I'm going to try and display this uh, in the water sailing along um, so I'm going to make a base for this uh, to make it look like it's in water but the way, from what I gather and as I say I'm not an expert on shipbuilding but from what I gather the way people normally do this is uh, the water line is basically along here and what people normally do is they would actually cut the hull the bottom of the hull off along the water line and then they'll basically so that it sits flat on the base and then they just put the water effects around it now I don't want to do that uh, for several reasons one because I think it's an absolute nightmare but also it's the fact that I want to give uh, my friend the opportunity to display this as he sees fit so either on this base or on the water base so I want to make a water base for this to go on, but one that it can be removed from. So what we're going to have to do is basically sink this into the base up to the water line, but in such a fashion that it can be removed. So <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> right, so how are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to try and use this. Uh, this is a piece of 50mm uh, polystyrene, expanded polystyrene. Uh, this is um, loft insulation. Uh, one of my neighbours was having their, well they had their roof replaced and they took loads of this out and just threw it in a skip. So I, um, I grabbed a couple of sheets of it. So now obviously this is too short for this but what I'm thinking of doing, um, what's kind of given me the idea is the box that this came in. Let me just grab that quickly. So here's the box and if I put the, the ship on the box that actually is more or less the right size, just a little bit too wide. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically do it kind of like that if you like size wise. So this box is uh, 25 inches long so I think that'll do for the length of the hull is um, it's about 22 and an eighth. So 25 inches gives us like a, a, an inch or so front and back. And then I'll do the same on the sides. And then what that'll do is just give it a little bit of water around it without making it so big that it won't, you know, like fit on a shelf or something. Um, I don't know where this is going to be displayed, but, you know, originally I was going to do a thing like this wide and it was like, well, where would you put it? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's not get carried away so that's the plan so this is um, ten and a half inches wide so half of that is five and a quarter which is there and if I put the ship on there then that gives us about an inch of reveal all the way around so hopefully that should be enough. I have got some more pieces. This is just this is this piece is the most handy because it's not um, six feet long. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to mark this and cut it in half, and then I will make it the appropriate length by taking one piece of it, cutting it a piece off, and sticking it on the end of this. Now that's going to be the fun bit: is marking and cutting this because if any of you have worked polystyrene, you know that it goes everywhere. Yay! Right, so let's just mark this. So we want uh, five and a quarter and 
five and a quarter. This is a framing square, proper one. <laughs> this is not the sort you get from B&Q. This is a professional one that I bought a long time ago in America. There we go. Right, now let's cut this in half. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, a kitchen knife, I think, to do this. I want something with a fairly long blade so I can cut through it in one go if I can. Right, so I've got this. It's a carving knife. I'm going to try and cut it with this. Let's see what happens. What I need to do is put something underneath it just to let it. Nah, this will do. Put a scrap uh, MDF. Let's put that under there. Oh, there we go. There we go, perfect. Oh, let's cut that really well. Ah, good, pleased with that. Okay, so now what we need to do is, uh, that end's quite straight, that end's not. What I want to try and do is um, square the ends up if I can. Let me get another square. Right, this is a slightly smaller square. What I want to do is just trim the end off to square it up. It doesn't have to be exactly square, but just um, squarer than it was. Right, let's see what that's like. That's not far off, that'll do. Okay, so, let's see what we've got here. So this piece is 17 and a 16th. See if we can square this end up as well. If I can take a sixteenth off of the end of this, I don't know if that will work or not, but this might be too close to the edge to cut it properly, but we'll see. measurements again. Oh, <laughs> it's now slightly under 17 but never mind. Um, right, so what we want to do now is put this piece to one side and we'll trim the end of this off to square it up. Ooh. and then cut it to length. 
Right, so let's measure out 25 inches, which is there. Let's just put this on here for a second and see. Yeah, see, I think that will work. Doesn't look too bad, does it? Right, let's cut this one in half. Right. And there we go. Uh, let's see which end is better. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make um, a box for this, uh, like a wooden box for this to sit in and that will hold it all together. Right, and the other thing I need to do is I need to carve um, the shape of the hull into the polystyrene so that this can sit down at the right level. This is one of these jobs where like a hot wire tool would be the way to go but I don't have one. So we'll just have to use the knife. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna draw a rough outline of the, uh, the hull. So that we know how much material to remove. There we go. Now, what I've also got to think about is when this goes on, it's going to have the rudders and the screws so they're going to have to be i'm going to have to take into account how they go when i cut this out and also um the fact that the, the bow here actually pitches forwards which means that where the water line is which is there below the water line the bow actually is further forwards than it is at the top so it's going to go it's going to have to go in like that, if that makes sense. But um, we'll, cut the, we'll cut out the rough shape and then I'll show you how I'm going to do this. Right, don't try this at home kids, but I'm going to make a quick and dirty, very dirty and possibly quite dangerous um, foam cutter. I've got this piece of 22 gauge um, nichrome wire, which I use for heating elements in smoke machines. And, what I've, and a, a 12 volt battery. This is a lead acid battery, so it has no overcharge or overload protection on it. Um, and what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna connect it to this wire, and then I can use that to cut the foam. But seriously, honestly, do not do this at home. This is, this is not recommended at all. Right, I think that's not far off. I think I can clean the rest of that out with a knife. Let's unplug this and let it cool down. That's uh, actually worked really well. <laughs> I mean, that's done in a couple of minutes, what would have probably taken me an hour with a knife, but uh, yeah, like I say, this is still a very dodgy solution, so don't do this at home. <laughs> if you're going to do this, go and get the proper bit of kit, because this is flaky. Anyway, um, let's get this cleaned up, make sure the uh, ship fits properly. Right, let's see if this goes in here. Right, that fits very well. Uh, might need to trim a little bit out the back there.
but aside from that that's looking pretty good so what we need to do now is uh, make the wooden box for this to go in Right, now don't get too excited, we're not actually starting the assembly yet. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just going to loosely attach the rudders and the, um, the prop shafts and props. Because what I want to do is I want to see uh, how much space I need to leave under uh, the stern for on the diorama. So I'm just going to pop these in. Yeah, I just want to see how much um, space I need to leave underneath. Because I'm going to basically put something here uh, to make a void in the bottom of the diorama for all this to go into without getting knocked off. But first I need to figure out how much space I actually need to leave. So, I'll just attach these bits with some blue tack for now. It seems how funny how small these rudders are when you consider how big the, the ship actually is. It's enormous and it's got these two tiny little rudders. <laughs> it makes you wonder how they ever managed to steer the thing. Still, I'm sure they knew what they were doing. Right, that'll do for that. Now, let's get the outer drive shafts. Right, put that on there like that. This is really awkward putting this thing underneath the, the camera because it's absolutely monstrous. Uh, it wants to go kind of like that. So basically, as long as we stay below this here, take that as a st basically the straight line from the bottom, I think we'll be all right. We might need to remove it from the sides. I'm going to go and try this in the uh, diorama and see how it fits. So what I've done is I've just boxed in the stern um, with some masking tape and cardboard. And that is there basically to create a <laughs> safe space, if you'll pardon the expression, for the um, rudders and prop shafts and whatnot. So that means now, as long as I leave a space, as long as this fits in the diorama, um, I can do all the rest of the stuff I need to do, knowing that once all this is removed, there'll be a, it will create a space in the diorama for all of this stuff to go in without getting damaged. Right, so I've, uh, I've boxed the back of this in as I mentioned uh, and I've made a few minor adjustments to the polystyrene here in the mould or in the, in the diorama base. That now goes in there quite nicely where I want it. So that's pretty much in there now where I want it and ready to go. So the next thing we need to do uh, is to coat the polystyrene in something to because it's going to have resin on it and the trouble is with the resin you put it straight on the polystyrene it will just dissolve it so we need to put something on the polystyrene to protect it and i'm going to do that with filler i'll show you that in a minute but first we need to also protect the plastic from the uh, everything we're going to do next because we don't want anything sticking to this obviously so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wrap the hull in cling film so this is um, just cheap cling film from Tesco's uh, any old cling film will do but what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it around the hull multiple times and that will do two things for us firstly it will protect the plastic but also uh, I don't know how well you can see that but where we've got these sort of um, like the anti torpedo defenses on the side there are lots of I don't know if you can actually see those or not, but there's like ridges down the sides. And obviously if I put those in and then put something over the top, it's going to get into those ridges and grip and we'll never get the thing out. 
so by putting the um, cling film over that it will smooth out those sides so it's a double whammy so now I'm going to put that on which should be good for a laugh if nothing else right <sighs> try and get rid of any errant polystyrene and uh, yeah right now this is going to be fun if nothing else so this is one of these things where you need like 12 pairs of hands oh it's all stuck so I'll turn that over to start with and what I'm going to try and do is start from the front hold that in place go down to the back and do that oh this cling film isn't clinging very well but we can I mean we're going to put several layers on so let's just tuck that in the sides and then we'll come back over the top I'll just go around it a few times like this first. Uh. And then what I'll probably do is cut this off and then tidy this up and then do it again. Get the air out of it. So I'll do a few more layers of this, then we'll come back and see what it looks like. Right. <laughs> So there it is all wrapped up. I uh, I put a roll of, a layer of, of uh, tin foil on it as well, just to give it a bit of extra protection. Um, it's got multiple wraps of cling film on it, so hopefully that will protect it. And what I'm going to do before I uh, pour anything is I'm going to give this a coat of Vaseline as well, um, just so that nothing can stick to it. I mean, to be honest, it shouldn't stick to the cling film anyway, but better safe than sorry. So now we can bring our our base back in make sure that still fits it's a bit of a squeeze but that's alright and what we want to do now is basically fill all the voids with um, filler uh, or plaster power, I'm going to use filler so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some filler and water it down a little bit so this is the filler I'm going to use, it's just normal um, cheap stuff from, I think this came from B&Q originally. Uh, so I'm, I've got a, a plastic pint pot here and some water and I'm just going to put some in here, thin it down so I can brush it on. Right, that's that mixed up, that's quite watery so what I'll do now is I'm going to take the boat out for a second, put that to one side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill around the edges here with the stuff straight out of the pot um, and then I'll basically paint this over the rest of it. Right, so that's just got that roughed in, so I'll just smooth it out a little bit and then um, we'll paint this stuff onto the inside of it. And again, it's important when doing this to make sure you cap cover everything completely, because you don't want any gaps where the resin can get through, because otherwise it will just wick through that hole and just ruin the whole thing which is not to say that's not what's going to happen here but I shall do my utmost to stop it I'm putting this on quite hefty and uh, I'll probably do a few coats of this
This is uh, Vaseline, I just keep some in a little pot here with a brush in it. And what I'm going to do is put some on the boat. It doesn't need a massive amount, it just needs a barrier basically, so we don't need great gobs of it on here, just enough to stop anything sticking to it. mainly on the sides, that's what we're most interested in. Right. And now we will pop that in there. And we'll leave that to sit up for a little while and then we'll take the the ship back out again and then let it dry completely. Okay right so uh, this is completely dry now and what I did while it was still slightly damp is I just pulled the ship out of it um, to leave that imprint and then I've just let it dry uh, and then I just went round the edges of it with a bit of sandpaper just to clean up any, any rough bits. Uh, but now that actually fits in there quite snugly. Um, there are a few gaps around the edges, but I think I'm just gonna have to deal with that. Um, so what I want to do now is uh, paint the filler to make it look a bit more kind of watery. I mean, we're gonna tint the resin that we pour over it, but um, the thing is the resin will be very thin so it will be you know probably end up quite see-through so I'm going to paint the bottom of this uh, a, a suitable sort of watery colour um, and then we can look at putting the resin on. I actually just decided before I do anything with the paint I'm going to um, peel off the masking tape just to make sure these edges are clean then I'll re-tape it and then paint it. So, because what I don't want to happen is when I peel this tape off, when it's finished, I don't want it to crack the, um, the filler and leave white spots. So, if I take this off first, that gives me a nice clean edge and then I can just tape it again and, um, and then paint it. Right, so I've got a couple of... Uh, acrylics here. Um, this is Payne's Grey which is a kind of a blue grey and this is um, a transparent emerald so I'll use a mix of the two of these uh, just to basically give us a, a darker base. Right so I've just uh, thinned this out with a bit of water because um, it's very very thick paint uh, so it's, it's still very thick but it's about 50-50 water and paint now so now we'll just put it on and see what it looks like. It may well need a couple of coats, but I'm not worried about that. As I say, the main purpose of this is just to um, kind of give us a, 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 an undercoat to work from. Right now I'm going to put some of the green in, just straight in with the blue and uh, we'll go over it with that and then we'll go over it with the blue again. And what this does, it will just add like a green tinge to it. So again because it's transparent it won't, um, it won't cover the blue as such, it will just add a bit of a tint to it. So it's a bit less uh, <laughs> blue.
and I don't know if you've noticed but what I'm trying to do with the brush is trying to keep the brush strokes all going in like the direction of the travel of the boat ship sorry right, I'm just gonna flip this up on its side so that I can see yeah see because there's quite a few bits in there that I've missed I don't know if you can see those Way. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> Missed quite a lot there. <laughs> Never mind. Alright, let's see what that looks like. Right, I think we've got everything pretty much covered now. Right, now we'll just leave that to dry. Right, so now this is all nice and dry. I've given it two coats of varnish out of a rattle can uh, just to seal everything, so that's all fine. And what we're gonna do now is start looking at putting some detail on the, the, the water. So to do that, I've got some uh, oil colors here. These are Crawford and Black. These are cheap ones that come from uh, the works, I believe. Um, and I'm going to use the white in here, uh, which is this one, to, uh, to put some highlights on here. This oil paint is actually really good for, for this kind of work because it doesn't have a lot of oil in it. Uh, it's nearly all pigment. It's, I should imagine as an oil paint it's probably awful, but for this kind of work it's brilliant. So I've got here a piece of uh, paper. Uh, this is um, actually... Um, a special type of paper. It comes from a an onion palette, which is designed for mixing chemicals and things. Uh, and it uh, it basically is impermeable to most fluids. So I've just squeezed out a bit of uh, paint onto there. I've got a brush here. This is a Humbrol number four. This is one of the ones that comes with the starter kits. That's actually quite useful. And I'm just going to get some paint on the brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go over the sort of the raised bits, the white water, like this. And the nice thing about doing this with oil paint is it, it actually has quite good coverage. And because we're doing it over the top of the, um, the varnish, if there's anything we don't like, we can just basically wipe it off and start again. So this is the, uh, the the bow end of the uh, of the ship. So what we're doing here is basically just creating like a bow wave, and I'll just work all the way down both sides, and uh, we'll create a little bit of white water. So what I'm doing is just especially like the raised bits from the uh, the filler that we put on just put some on there and that's the great thing about this filler is the fact that these little rough bits around the edges which is why I deliberately didn't tidy them up too much is because I wanted to be able to do this and this gives us our our ship in motion I did actually uh, toy with the idea <laughs> um, of making this look like uh, literally like a ship in a box and actually having like white water around the edge of the box um, but I thought that was possibly a little bit considering we're actually going for some level of realism here I thought that might be a bit much so I'll just stick to to doing this this way So, as I said, anywhere where there's raised parts around the edge, that's what we'll just basically paint them white and uh, they make very good water effects. Right, so that's this side pretty much done for now. Like that. And I'll just turn it around and do the other side.
So I don't know how well you can see this, but um, as I mentioned, I'm doing the parts, the raised parts around the edges. When I lifted the ship out of the mould or out of the uh, the filler before, any like rough bits around the edges, instead of cleaning them off, I just basically lifted them and pushed them back uh, to create this kind of like lip effect around the edge. And of course, that was but that was why I did it was to so I could use it as a to create this like this like water effect around the edge I mean there's lots of ways you can do this I've seen people do it with resin and um, even like artificial snow and things like that is also a, a good way of, of I've seen people doing it but I thought seeing as I already had this effect I might as well make use of it as like I say this particular type of oil paint as I mentioned it has so little oil in it it's almost all pigment which means for this kind of work when you normally with oil paint you have to kind of like soak up the oil and everything else um, with this paint it works really well for this because it just um, you've just almost just got nothing but pigment all right let's move that down a bit so you can see what I'm doing this is one of the troubles with working on a big piece like this is finding somewhere to actually be able to work on it fortunately I've got fairly large area here in the workshop I can use it's just meant I've had to move all the cameras and everything else to, to do it and uh, it also means I'm now right next to the air conditioner which is in one respect is quite nice when the weather's warm like it is now but it also means there's if there's any wind noise on the mic I do apologize for that but There's not a lot I can do about it because it is exceptionally hot in here without it. When I came in earlier it was almost 40 degrees Celsius in here. <laughs> right, so that's the basic outline of the, of the ship done. But what I'm going to do as well, you see there's bits here like these raised bits, I'm going to do that as well. Um, just because I can really just add a little bit of extra it's sometimes a little bit tricky to see what you're doing because the um, the way the light reflects off of the varnish sometimes makes it a bit awkward to see but, but hopefully you can get an idea of, uh, of what I'm doing I'll do the rest of it and then um, We'll come and look at it when it's all done. Right, and this last little bit I'm doing here, I'm just kind of almost like dry brushing around the sides just to kind of pick out some of the highlights. And again, it's just to make it look a bit more, um, well, watery really. So I'm just kind of using like the, the side of the brush at a very low angle with a very little bit of paint on it and just, uh, you can see I'm just kind of like just like I say, almost dry brushing it just to pick up the the highlights it's actually coming out very well I'm very pleased with how this is looking actually just got to try not to get any on the uh, on the wood but again because it's varnished if I do get any on the wood I'll just wipe it off so I think that might well do us let's have a look well, I can show you that so that's the back. I'm just all the way up to the front there. I think that uh, doesn't look too bad at all, does it? There we go. Right, I think we'll leave that like that. Um, and what we'll do is we'll let it set up a bit and then I'll give it another coat of. Uh, of gloss varnish just to seal it all in place so we'll leave it for a while and then we'll come back and do that
Right, uh, this is all dried now and I must admit I don't like the way it's come out. Um, the more I look at it, I'm not overly keen on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this front part. I might do the sides as well. But I'm going to use this, um, this is uh, Windsor & Newton Heavy Structure Gel. It's absolutely amazing stuff. Uh, it's a paste, it's kind of like modelling paste, uh, but it dries uh, clear, completely clear. And the idea is that you mix it with paint and uh, use it to like build up layers and things. But when it's on its own, it basically just stays wherever you put it. It's absolutely amazing stuff. Let me show you. So that's what it looks like. And I'll just put it on with a coffee stirrer. But basically all you do is just get a little bit. And you can see, so if I put this on here, it will just stay like that. It won't move at all. Um, like this little bit here that's sticking out will just stay put forever. Um, it's absolutely amazing stuff. I mean, obviously, if you mix paint with it, it loses some of its properties because you're effectively thinning out. But when you use it on its own like this, it basically just stays exactly how you place it. And so the great thing is with it is you can use it to, as the name suggests, make a, you know effectively a structure um, so what I'll do is I'll just put it on and kind of build up the area that I want to create the bow wave and then uh, we'll shape it but you can see as I put it on it just stays put it doesn't move at all it's absolutely astonishing stuff So I'll just build this up and then uh, as I say I'll kind of shape it into what I want and it, as I say it dries like a, to a clear gloss so you can use it to uh, you can use it for water effects on its own I mean you could if you wanted to create the whole water effect just using this stuff so what I'm doing is just kind of like teasing it out with the uh, with the coffee stirrer just to make it look a bit more sort of like you know water that's being pushed to one side but what you can actually do with it is um, and I've done this before with this stuff is you can build it up like this and then you can actually like sculpt out underneath it and create like an actual wave shape and it will just hold it will just stay put it's absolutely amazing stuff I know I keep going on about it but it really is absolutely great a bit more down here at the front to kind of hide the old stuff but you see I don't know if you can see the way this is like spiked up where I put it and it will just stay there I mean if I do this like literally at a 90 degree angle like here you see that will just stay there and it will just dry like that it won't move at all and it doesn't matter how warm it is or how cold it is or anything like that it will just stay put so I don't want it quite as extreme as that but right that doesn't look too bad and I think what I might do is I might go down the sides as well um, and do some add some down the sides and see what that looks like so I'll do that and then we'll come back afterwards and see what it looks like Right, so I've been down both sides. Let me see if I can give you a bit of a closer look. So hopefully you can see how that works and the fact that it's just basically stayed wherever I've put it. So I've gone all the way down both sides and then um, back up the other side as well. And the nice thing is, as well, because it has such structure to it, um, it's even the fact that where there are a couple of bits on the sides that had, that weren't smooth, I can basically fill those gaps with this stuff and, uh, and, and get rid of them. So now, the only trouble is with this stuff is it does take quite a long time to dry. 
so what I'll do now is I'll just leave this. Um, it will skin over very quickly, but I just need to leave it for a little while, for a, for a couple of days, and let it dry out, and then we can um, and then we can paint it. I might just paint it white again. Actually, I'm not sure, but we'll see what it looks like. So, but that's a vast improvement over what we had, especially the uh, the bow wave at the front. That looks much better now. Okay, so this is uh, dried now, and it's uh, it's kind of it's like rubber when it's dried, which is good. I like that because it means it's flexible. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it now, and I'm going to use a better quality paint than I used the last time. I used the, the the Crawford and Black, and I think I've mentioned before with that stuff is it's great for like mixing washes and stuff, but it's really not much good as an actual paint. So instead, I'm going to use this. Uh, this is De La Rolne Graduate uh, Titanium White. So I'm going to paint uh, all of this uh, with that and uh, then we'll come back and see what it looks like. So I'm going to uh, kind of montage this for the simple reason that I want to turn the AC back on because it's brutally hot in the workshop. <laughs> so I'll do this and then uh, we'll come back and see what it looks like. Right, well we're nearly done. I'm just getting in underneath the bow wave and getting some paint on that. And I think that will do us. So there we go. I think that looks pretty good, doesn't it? So what we've got to do now is leave this to dry and then um, we just need to give the whole thing a few coats of uh, gloss varnish to seal everything and then we can uh, we can wrap this up and here is our finished article uh, I'm very pleased with how this came out it's um, something very new for me as the whole ship build has been and it was uh, an, an idea I had right at the beginning and I wasn't sure if it was going to work <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah it's worked out really well uh, I like using the uh, the heavy structure gel to get the the, the waves uh, that's something that's been very useful. It's a technique I shall definitely use more in the future. And uh, it just goes to show that you don't necessarily need to use resin and things like that to create some uh, some decent water effects. So, yeah, I think this has uh, worked out very well. Uh, Drek NFL is very pleased with it. I'm very pleased with it. So uh, everybody's happy. So hopefully this was uh, of use to some of you. Um, it's certainly been a fun little side project for me. So... Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.